Afternoon, folks. Welcome to The Daily Politics. With us for the duration, Plaid Cymru leader, Leanne Wood. Welcome back to the programme. So last week, the Prime Minister told his Cabinet colleagues that they would be free to campaign to leave the EU once his renegotiation is complete and the campaign has begun. This morning, the leader of the House of Commons, Chris Grayling, has told the Daily Telegraph that it would be a disaster for Britain to stay inside the EU as it is constituted at the moment. But he says he supports David Cameron's renegotiation strategy. Let's talk to our political correspondent, Norman Smith. He's in Parliament's Port Callis House. Norman, uh, Chris Grayling was given the credit for forcing the Prime Minister to allow Cabinet Ministers to go their own way. So I guess we shouldn't be surprised that he's first to break ranks. No, I don't think we should be surprised. And certainly in uh, Downing Street, you know, they've responded with almost a shrug of the shoulders. They expected Chris Grayling pretty much to do this. And, you know, I'm tempted to follow Paddy Ashdown's example and say, I'll eat my hat if Chris Grayling campaigns to remain in the EU. It's absolutely <laughs> clear he's positioning himself. To, to, I'll regret that, I know. But anyway, I think it's pretty clear he's going to campaign uh, to get out because when you look at his arguments in The Telegraph, he's not talking about a minor tweak of our relations with the EU. He's not talking about tighter benefit curbs. He's saying we can't defend our national interest if things don't change in Europe. We're continually being outvoted by Eurozone countries, even though we're not in the Euro. The European Court of Justice is setting the rules. I mean, when you take those sort of arguments, this is not a man sitting awkwardly on the fence saying, oh dear, oh dear, what should I do? It's plain as a pike staff he has made up his mind that he wants to campaign to leave, but at the moment he is just, just staying within the Prime Minister's strictures that he doesn't want anyone breaking ranks ahead of any deal he may get at next month's EU summit. All right, Norman, thanks for that. I think your hat is a lot safer than Paddy Ashdown's. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll get one ready just in but case. We'll get, one, we'll get one out of the uh, costume department just in case. <laughs> yeah, how do you think this loosening of cabinet responsibility um, impacts the EU debate in your mind? Well, it makes a, a bit of a mockery of, of the government holding a position, uh, in my view. Uh, there needs to be some leadership on this question and the government is unable to provide that leadership when the cabinet are completely split on it. At least that's what it looks like is going to happen. So I think it's going to potentially um, cause some confusion and I think the case to remain in um, will be made all the more difficult because of this decision for them to have a, a free vote. Right. Why do you think it will be made all the more difficult? In a way, Eurosceptics um, are already saying and have said in the past that the government machine will still be much um, you know, behind the Prime Minister's line post the renegotiation, come what may. But people are going to be confused, aren't they? They're going to be looking to the government for a position and they'll be hearing different voices coming from that government. There will be no clear um, position, there'll be no clarity uh, on what, what the government is saying that is best for Although Britain. Although that happened be in 1975 too and people seem to manage. I don't remember um, that <laughs> one. Well, let me <laughs> remind you, they voted, uh, the government was just as split then under Harold Wilson. Wilson was forced to allow his MP his cabinet ministers to go their own way. A lot bigger names uh, than Chris Grayling, people like Tony Benn, Michael Foote, and, and so on. And they were on programmes and, like um, this. And they Benson. won, the government won, the pro side won, two to one. It was a huge victory. Right, OK. Well, let's hope that the, the same <laughs> result happens again. I'm very much in favour of uh, a Remain In vote because it's in Wales's best interests to remain in. So what I'm looking for is some sort of clarity around the argument. And I think that people need to have the information and that to be provided as clearly as possible. And that debate hasn't really happened yet. Right. I mean, just briefly, Nicola Sturgeon is calling for Scotland to have a veto mm -hmm. over a future, uh, you know, the result or referendum on EU members. I mean, it's doubtful that that will be granted, but do you agree with her? Should Wales? Yes, I don't think it's right that one country should uh, vote uh, in one way and pull the others out potentially against their will. So, for example, if Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland vote to remain and England votes to leave, then it isn't right that one country can pull the others out. There should be an agreement on the part of all four before Britain uh, withdraws. Now, there were heated exchanges at Prime Minister's questions yesterday as Jeremy Corbyn pressed David Cameron on the government's housing policy. 